بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا لاسٹ لیکچر آف دا سیریز آف بزنس انگلش دس از لیکچر 32 اینڈ دس از دا لاسٹ لیکچر آف دا کورس اینڈ دا لاسٹ لیکچر آف دا ریویژن سیریز ایز ویل ان ٹوڈیز لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ ود لیکچر 19 اینڈ گوئنگ ٹو ریوائز انٹل لیکچر 28 سوری لیکچر 29 بیکاز فرام 30th وی اسٹارٹڈ آر ریویژن ویل Um, lecture 19th, lecture 20th and lecture 21, uh, these three lectures um, talked intensively about report writing process. Um, definitely in the previous lecture I, where I finished, though it was report writing as well, however where we were focusing, we were focusing on researching as, as, a, as, a, as a separate item of discussion. However, in these lectures you will find that our focus is now primarily on report writing and we are discussing types of report. What are these preliminary reports? What are the problems and need analysis uh, activities? And comparison reports, recommendation and feasibility reports. Or who, who is the audience for these reports? How we do, do we get to know about the audience? Because so far we could understand that information about audience audience analysis is the most important thing in business documentation and the conventions of organizations and formatting of course well um, if I ask you to define business reports what would you say well yes very right a business report is an orderly and objective communication of factual information that serves some business purpose A report can be written academically too, however there your intention will be academic. So that will serve some academic purpose. Orderly, objective, factual information and purpose, whether it's academic or professional, um, the purpose, these four items when contribute and um, you know work in a document, they help us form a business report. Reports are categorized by uh, three different, um, uh, you know, um, phenomenons, and they are like functions, time, and uh, place. Like, if we are categorizing reports by function, they are informal reports, and they are um, informational reports, and they are analytical reports. If we categorize reports by time, they are progress reports. They are periodic reports and there are spatial reports and if you categorize them by form they are memo letter and manuscript now uh, by form by time and then by function these are the three ways to categorize these report three general ways now moving on away and I want to show you how these reports they uh, they differ in their layout and why do they differ in their layout well look at this this picture this diagram for the second time on the screen look at the um, the expanding size of the picture if you start right from the from the beginning down there in the bottom look at the right hand side margin that provides you two clues informal situation that is simple problem Building up on that and slowly and gradually you are getting formal and your situation get complexed. So if you, are, if you are dealing with an informal situation and problem is simple, this will affect the length and text and the content and the approach of your report, the layout, the organization, the format, the appearance. And with the pace you will moving, will be moving on to the formal situation and the complex situation it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and your requirements will be more and more and more so look at that the things that you do are the maximum when the situation is formal and it's a complex situation the things that that you do in an informal situation with less with simple problem are minimum that's one page report so it is it can be a memo report then a letter report and then a manuscript report Now, what is the process that we use to write a report? Like, like a writing stage uh, aspect of business communication, report writing goes through a complete and quite rigorous process. You plan the project, you plan your report, you design the research tool, 
you collect and analyze data that is the research process you organize the information that is again your analysis analysis you are into your analysis and you start writing your report now writing your report again goes through different stages you remember the stages of writing you plan your writing you you um, write your first draft you revisit that you revise that and this is how you are writing your report and then again as a final document you will like to edit that and proofread that uh, if you look at the uh, look at a flow chart that will talk about the stages of writing this can be divided into four stages this is how you can evaluate your work at every step look at the very first stage is of preparation second is of research itself third is of analysis and fourth is of writing that again has four stages of writing so when you prepare you are identifying the problem and defining it and you analyze the audience you look at the purpose and you know uh, requirements you look at whether it's going to be informative you talk about its um, its format what format the report will be what type of remote report it will be whether short or long informal or formal um, its category of time category of uh, form category of uh, uh, what type of report is this so all these ideas are basically decided they are they are they are scrutinized at the preparation stage when you are preparing for a report because then it will lead you to the research aspect and the research phase will be of determining the methodology then applying the methodology and collecting the data then uh, you know applying your uh, data analysis uh, methods and collecting information getting your findings and then then doing the analysis when you get your findings and you analyze it you are organizing and evaluating the information you draw conclusions and make your recommendations suggestions whatsoever comes out of it and here you are done with your material you got your material so you are done with your raw material now you have to put this into document because you want to report it to somebody you want someone to read the entire process that you have gone through so you write your report and when you write your report you plan it you draft it you write it and you rewrite it and you edit it and this is the total package of report so when adjusting the report to your purpose you should consider who will read the report why the audience is going to read your report or why your report only in what details do, do they want it with what prejudice they will read it what are their prejudices their biases with what knowledge what background knowledge do they have and what decision do you want them to make or what action do you want them to take is it to only inform or to persuade or to bring some kind of change what do you want them to do so what are we doing well going back to our discussion we are taking care of audience need and demand we are shifting the focus from ourselves to audience it's not I anymore it's the audience who is the focus of my attention then keeping your audience's needs in mind will help you decide the level of formality in structure and in tone of your report the length of the report the format of the report what kinds of data to include graphics specifically what whether they should be table figures general graphics or pictures or how much to explain if you know about their background knowledge if they do not know much you may need to get into deeper discussions however if they already have good knowledge you can build up on that background knowledge and talk about more things more new things that they are unaware of so this aspect C straight goes to your knowledge of audience in fact all of these aspects straight go to your audience knowledge what positions to defend what is going to be your argument and what side are you taking then the visual sophistication required now preliminary reports problem or need analysis well preliminary reports is one kind of report and a problem or need analysis report uh, a very preliminary piece of writing is that examines a particular issue that the client faces a problem or needs analysis is particularly appropriate when the need or problem is complex or ill-defined well 
when adjusting the report to your purpose you should consider you know the who's the why is the what the where and uh, you know all five w's that can answer the completeness of your document that can address the completeness of your document now let's talk about comparison reports another very important type of report well a comparison report examines two or more options and performs a relative advantages analysis to determine which option would best serve the client use a comparative format when there are several serious alternatives that should be considered and then this makes us talk about feasibility report well feasibility report and recommendation report are almost alike however a feasibility report may respond to a single question or recommend a specific option so if you are only responding to a single question this may not be a re recommendation however if you are not only s responding to an option but recommending it becomes feasibility plus recommendation it may also apply several criteria um, to the to the to the to that option and make a judgment as to whether it would be in the client's best interest to implement the option a simple thumbs up or thumbs down technique use a feasibility format when the client has one favored alternative or plan of action and is trying to determine the effects of that one occurs of uh, a course that one that one course of action when taken together these two reports type uh, both re recommendation report and feasibility reports make statements about what action should be taken to solve a problem they resolve a dilemma or undertake a course of action the main distinction between the two report types is dependent on their positioning in a company's decision making process so proposal requirements uh, now talking about reports we we have come to another type of report that is proposal report what is this proposal report proposal is one type of document as well that is a plan that you submit before you write your complete proposal however proposal is in it in itself as a document it can be a report too so a proposal report provides sufficient information to persuade the reviewer that the proposed work represents an innovative and profitable approach to an important problem being discussed and if it is approved then you get a clue that you will be you know given enough funds or given enough time or liberty or whatever you've asked for to carry out a research project and if we discuss proposal as as a separate entity uh, the proposal will be evaluated on the technical approach having a reasonable chance of meeting the topic objective um, and then the approach being innovative not routine the proposer's capability to implement the technical approach that is has or can obtain people and equipment or finances to suitable for the task so um, what are the table of contents of a proposal report of a proposal it has a cover page it is an abstract it has technical contents and it has work plan and related work one very interesting thing is that in order to get an approval for a proposal report you may need to provide a proposal for that too because you are dealing with two things together please do not confuse proposal itself is a kind of plan that you write before writing a long length report that you write before doing a research process okay that's a plan that's a proposal it is also called synopsis and proposal proposal comes as a report too the, the document that you are compiling as a proposal is basically a report that you are compiling so don't get confused the technical content that we deal with in proposals are um, identification and significance of the problem that you are going to deal with technical background technical objectives work plan statement of work timeline and deliverables and the related work now the format the proposal takes care of is proposal proposal cover sheet involves title of project date proposed label it is a proposal for something or a synopsis 
submitted to and submitted by and it also involves an abstract and we had a discussion about abstract abstract gives a, a, you know um, a, gives an idea of the proposed project and it discusses anticipated benefits potentials of for commercial applications and profits and the abstract is often the first cut in selecting proposals for further reading of a uh, of a proposal funding is the later stage now the format also includes layout and format will include the the margins you take care of the title the headers the footers um, use of font type font face whether it should be bold or italic or how are you going to uh, provide um, you know some kind of uh, um, organization whether you'll be using numbers numericals or you'll be using some bulleting or some other kind of highlighting technique so or you're going to submit a hard copy of the report or a soft copy or both together all these uh, decisions are taken when you are discussing about the format of the report now let's uh, revise some types of proposals that we write when we are writing proposals uh, one type is internal proposal if you write a proposal to somebody uh, within your organization it is an internal proposal uh, an internal proposal can be a letter proposal or a memo proposal with internal proposal you may not have to include certain sections you can skip on the many of the sections and can stick to the essence of the body of the proposal however an external proposal either deals with uh, the format that is a letter proposal or manuscript proposal is one written form uh, you know that is independent that is written to an uh, either an individual or an organization and that deals with all the uh, all the details of uh, of the project so to convince or inform or persuade the other body the other party on the other end now we talked about the two terms about research projects and um, composing the these drafts whether this this activity can be a solicited one or an unsolicited one well it's very uh, very important to understand this concept and uh, and differentiate between both of these terms because again they affect our approach towards the document solicited activities business activities or business proposals are if a, if an activity is solicited the recipient of the of the of this activity whether it's verbal or written or a document is some way request it has some way requested this this thing to be done Typically, a company will send out requests for proposal writing. <coughs> there will be public announcement or um, requesting proposal for some project through the email or you know newspaper or published any way of publishing it. It can be on the computer, on the media, electronic media or print media. They will give an advertisement. They will they will do an announcement. They will provide some announcement, f and they will offer. Uh, you know this uh, opportunity to the to the to the ones who are interested in doing that so it has some kind of announcement this can be internal this can be external however unsolicited proposals are those in which the recipient has not requested proposals with unsolicited proposals you sometimes must convince the recipient that a problem is worth paying attention or it need uh, you know exist before or it exists before you can begin the main part of the problem things to remember when writing a proposal uh, well you need to be very careful about the, the things that we are going to discuss now it a proposal has a particular interest and goal either goal or goals and that's why the writer writes the proposal so it's always purpose driven the recipient of the proposal be it an organization or, a, or an individual or a group of people has their own or its own interest and goals which may or may not coincide with those of the proposer to whom the proposal is being proposed so the proposal should be convincing to the potential funder or the recipient and it should show that the proposed activity will be a good investment this is especially important when there is a competition between you and other proposers when there are many unsolicited or solicited members who would like to take up on the same project and it's a, a win or lose situation all 
always make sure that your proposals, proposal meets the expectations of the recipient. This recipient can be a funder and in funding situations this can get very critical. How to make sure that your proposal meets the expectations of a given funder or given uh, of a recipient? Well, um, in, first of all you need to have a, a detailed, very careful, insensitive audience analysis, right? Now, in order to write a proposal that meets the expectation of a given funder, you should try to know the funder's goals and interests. If you are writing an unsolicited proposal to a private company, a good source of information might be the company's published reviews and annual reports. Requests for proposals are usually the best source of information when you are writing a solicited proposal because they would have all the details inside. If your proposed activity and the request for proposals, request for proposal, RFP, don't match, try to look for another funding agency. Do not throw your proposal away. And let's move on to lecture 22 that continues with our discussion on proposal writing and its common section and talks about the attachments with that that includes appendixes and um, um, letters. So what are the common section in proposals? Well, the general outline of the proposal should be adapted and modified according to the needs of the readers and the demand of the topic proposed. For example, long complicated proposals might contain all the following sections. In contrast, shorter or simpler proposals might contain only some of the sections or the main ones. Look at the sections and the, and, and, the, and the parts inside the proposal. Well, the very first one is the title page. All right. So the title page of a proposal has specific formats for title pages. Like it varies from one proposal to another. However, uh, most include the following things. But it always, you are the one who is going to take the CN because you are the writer. You know about your specifications, the requirements of your audience. The title page usually, um, uh, the title of the proposal is as sh should be as short and informative as possible. A reference number for the proposal should be there, so if there are many proposals to be submitted, this can be easily located. The name of the potential funder, the recipient of the proposal, the proposal's date of submission, the signature of the project director and responsible administrators in the proper, in the in the in the prop, uh, propers. Uh, in the proposer's institution or company. Well, uh, an abstract would include a very important part of the, of the proposal because it's a kind of highlight, it's a kind of flashlight, it provides a short review and, and a summary of whatsoever is going on, on in the entire proposal. However, there is a difference between summary and the abstract. Abstract catches the attention. Um, the abstract of a proposal is short, often 200 words or less even, maybe 150 words. In a short proposal um, addressed to someone within the writer's inter uh, institution, the abstract may be located on the title page. However, in a longer proposal, the abstract will usually occupy a page by itself following the title page. The abstract should briefly define the problem and its importance the objectives of the pro project, the method of the evaluation, and the potential impact of the project. Now it, there, it's turn for table of contents. So what do you mean by table of contents, girls and boys? The table of contents lists the sections and the, the, the body of the, uh, of the, of the proposal, that it, uh, what, whatever it includes and the subsections of the proposal and their page numbers as well. So if, if the reader would want to quickly access some, some particular part, they can look at the table of content and see, okay, which section is this, this one, and which page number is this, this one. You definitely would see example of uh, table of contents uh, in every book that you buy from the market. They have uh, index or uh, table of contents. It's, uh, it's all together the same thing. Now after this, you have your introduction section. Plan the introduction to your proposal carefully. Make sure it does all of the following things.
but not necessarily in this order. The order may change, the order may vary. Um, however, the most that applies to your, uh, however, the most of these things are standard in, in, in the proposals. Like uh, it indicates, introduction indicates that the document to follow is a proposal. It refers to some previous contact that with the recipient of the proposal or to your source of information about the project. And it finds uh, one brief motivating statement that will encourage the recipient to read on and to consider doing the project. It should not be boring. It should not be dull. It should not be dead. It needs to have some life beat in it. Give an overview of the contents of the proposal. Then bring in your background, background of the problem or the issue that you are dealing with. The background section discusses what has brought about the need of the project. What problem? What opportunity there is for improving things? What the basic situation is? Well, method, procedure and theory. We are dealing with all three of them together. In most proposals, you'll want to explain how you'll go about doing the proposed work if approved to do it. This acts as an additional persuasive element. It shows the audience you have a sound, well thought out approach to the project. Also, it serves as the other form of background some proposals need. Remember that the background section, the one dis discussed before, focused on the problem or need that brings about the proposal. However, in this section, you discuss the technical background relating to the procedures or technology you plan to use in the proposed work. So, checklist for your proposal. You need to have a checklist. You need to make it. You, either you need to adopt it or you adapt it or you, you take one and modify it according to your needs. But always make a checklist so you are sure that you are adding all these things into the proposal. As you reread and revise your proposal and making a final draft of it, watch out for problems such as uh, some of these, like make sure that uh, you use the right format. Remember, the memo format is for te internal proposals and the business letter format is for proposals written from one external organization to another. Whether you use a cover memo or cover letter, that is your, entirely your choice. Now write a good introduction. Um, in good introduction, state that this is a proposal and provide an overview of the contents of the proposal. Make sure to identify exactly what you are proposing to do. And then make sure that a report, a written document is somehow involved in the project you are proposing to do. Remember that in this course we are trying to do two things. We write a proposal and plan a term report project. Make sure the sections are in a logical, natural order. For example, don't hit the audience with schedules and costs before you have gotten them interested in the project. Now, break out the cost section into, into specifics like include hourly rates and other such details if they are applicable or don't just hit them with a, with a whooping big final cost because that is going to surprise the uh, the, the funder agency if you are asking for some finances. For internal projects, don't omit the section on cost and qualifications. There will be cost, not, just not direct ones. For example, how much time will you need? Will there be printing, binding cost, any type of cost included? Include your qualifications. Imagine your proposal will go to somebody in the organization who doesn't know you so be very particular now uh, in business proposals what what do we expect the effective business proposals are expected for um, their innovation and creativity are are they innovative and they push the frontiers of knowledge or do they contribute to national needs and priorities or the institutional needs or priorities or my needs or priorities being your audience or do they go beyond marginalized areas? Do they integrate well with educational goals or professional goals or academic goals, whatever goals they are discussing? Do they involve primary research or it's just a desk study? We do not support, expect as uh, incidental 
to the research goals of research. Development efforts should be visible. Computer programming, we should be aware of that, how to use computers for your purpose. Design of and commercialization, whatever you are doing, you should be aware of that, you should be trained for that. Now, uh, some proposal basics deal with um, writing to the reviewers, not to me and not to yourself. What you are writing, always make sure that you understand you are writing for somebody specific to read with a specific purpose. You are not writing for yourself. You are not doing it for your pleasure. So don't address your needs. Address the needs of your reviewers. Your proposal will be judged by the reviewers. Reviewers want to know four things. What is it about? the research objective. How will you do it? And why should I take you as, the, as, the, as, as a potential candidate to do it? So what will, how will you do it? Accomplished, how will you accomplish your objectives? And do you have potential to do it? Can you do it? You and your facilities, are they enough to meet my objectives? Is it worth doing? Well, and now, the, the recipient has all the, all the authority to judge you for all these things. And you will be successful only if you have embedded these answers already in your proposal. So this is basically all the proposals need to convey, but it needs to convey this particularly. Well, research topic is like we, I said that a wrapper of a, of a bigger, a larger document is a charmer. Research topic is a charmer as well. Research topic should be or must be something to be researched. It must not have been done before. It has to be original. It has to be innovative. It has to be creative. It must be significant. There must be higher than probability zero that you can do it. Because if there is zero probability, then there is no worth doing this project. It needs to have some, some percentage. And I'm being very humble in mentioning this percentage that probability should be more than zero. It should be more than that. And you should have proper research to support that evidence that this has a probability or chance to win. It must lend itself to a, to a, to a viable research plan. You must have the facility to accomplish the research. It should fit into your strategic plan. Now, what is the groundwork? Do you know in your field what's the current state of the art regarding your, the subject you are addressing, the problem or issue is which that is your interest? Who are the top 10 researchers who are doing such, such uh, research that you are going to um, carry out? What they are doing right now? Where they get their funding from? What they consider to be the key research issues? Who would likely review your proposal? And how much money is available for a grant? What the grant opportunities are? Now, what are the research objectives? The research objective is a concise statement of what you intend to find out that we don't already know. If you already know it, then your research will not be of any worth. So, this is probably the hardest part of the proposal. There are a few examples how not to do it. Well, the objective of my research, of my research is to provide a quantum leap in the design of anti-gravity boots. What do you mean by quantum leap? What do you mean by anti-gravity boots? Well, you need to be very clear in your objectives. State it clearly. Or if you say, the goal of this project is to develop an integrated modeling tool for the hardening process. What are you talking about? Be specific. You have to be specific in your objective. Or there are a few more examples that we have already done. What you need to do in your objective is to be very clear, be specific, be to the point. Tell your reader what you are doing and what is to be done, what will be achieved. A proposal summary is very important because um, I discussed that point earlier that it's it's one thing though we do write in the end of the pr proposal like when we are done done making the proposal in the end 
this is the the task to be done that we write the summary of the proposal because it involves everything that we provide in the proposal whatever the document is this document is all about this and then we write a summary of it however when we format our proposal this part of writing comes in the beginning so if somebody does not have enough time to go through your proposal somebody will provide him the picture the clear bigger picture and the complete picture because abstract is still not the complete picture at times it is not so proposal summary basically answers what we want to know whatever I want to know for sure should be there in the summary like what is your research objective this is what directs your proposal to the appropriate program what is your approach provide a clear outline just two or three sentences would suffice however it has to be very clear to the point why is your contribution important to your research community what is your intellectual merit why you if successful what will be the benefit to society or to organization or to me as an individual what benefit why is your project important to uh, me organization or society or the city or the community at large always remember that your proposal will be returned without review if you fail to include explicit statements of intellectual merit and broader impact you can entitle them intellectual merit and broader impact if you would want to you use the wrong font or it is too small to read no matter what quality of information you use inside if it is not eligible it will be simply refused the margins are too narrow the margins are too narrow maybe the text has gone into the binding I will not be able to read it so I close it your bio is incorrectly formatted you have not given your correct bio data or maybe you have given provided false bio data and it has been proved you have an unauthorized uh, you know attachment something is plagiarized something is uh, unauthorized and you have attached it this was our, our talk based on lecture 22 and lecture 23 in the end we again uh, though we, we, ha we had been talking about throughout the course regarding the process of writing separately for each kind of document but in the end we had a full-fledged uh, talk about the writing stages that we do for uh, document writing in business and these stages involve pre-writing, writing and rewriting or post-writing the rationale for the writing process um, uh, is that all these stages help you achieve some goal and what are these goals pre-writing helps you examine your purpose determining your goal consider your audience their needs desires demands their background knowledge what they want gathering your data and determining how your content will be provided writing stage helps you organize and format your draft and rewriting stage helps you polishing your document now look at this this these stages and the and the and the and the goals that they offer you to achieve how pertinent they are for business scenario because this is all what you demand so strategies for writing process are that there are several stages for writing process however each stage is essential pre-writing writing revising and editing in pre-writing stage you choose your topic and you narrow it determine your audience your purpose the tone of your language or the content your point of view which side which position are you taking and definitely the tense you are going to deal with you explore your topic in detail and you make or design a plan then you narrow your topic your topic should pass the three question test does it entrust me or, uh, to make yourself motivated full of energy it should be of your interest do I have something to say about it what knowledge I have to you know uh, discuss this thing do I have ample information is it specific or or too broad do I need to limit it or delimit it well then you determine your audience well once again determining your audience is very important how do you do that your audience is composed of those who will read your writing of course so you need to ask yourself who are my readers what do my readers know about my topic 
what do my readers need to know about my topic more? How do my readers feel about my topic? Like, what are their want? What is the emotional, uh, you know, level of the reception? Now, determine your purpose. Again, one very important aspect of business writing. It's reason for your writing. Unless you have a reason for writing, you should not go into it. Whenever you write, you always have a purpose. So, uh, you need to. Most writing fits into one of these three categories. Either you do expressive writing or you do informative writing, or you do persuasive writing. You see, we are going back to the same categories. However, one writing may come under uh, two of these categories or three of these categories together. You explore your topic, you go and do some research. Pre-writing techniques involve brainstorming, listing information, free writing, making notes, making map of ideas, clustering ideas together, questioning them, going deep inside the question, then discussing further, then making an outline and slowly and gradually what you are doing, you are developing on your writing plan. What do you want to explore and talk about? Then making a plan. Before you begin drafting your essay, you should make a plan, a road map. A road map, this, the term itself is self-explanatory. Review, evaluate and organize ideas. Written in your pre-writing, then make a plan for your essay or for your article for your report. And this should have a thesis statement, your hypothesis or something that you want to uh, prove in the end, uh, true or false. Your supporting evidence, the order that you want to move on with, the organization and the structure of your document. You make a plan about these things and then consider how your writing, writing or write-up will be organized what measures for internal organization or external organization you are taking then create an outline and create a flow chart what first then next then next you're going to address in the in the write-up make a sample outline and you need to have a five section strategy into when you're dealing with each section of your proposal like for if you bring in proposal proposal has many sections as we discussed each section should have then a flow inside. In a flow, you talk about the main, the, whatever the section is about. You introduce the section, you talk about it, develop your argument, and then you close the section. Then you move on to the next section. And each section is connected to each other to, to bring in that coherence that is demanded for a chain-like feeling that is demanded. Writing stage. During the writing stage, you should create your your articles title because here you are clear about what you are writing and the title would come to your head compose a draft a draft is the first whole version of all your ideas put together it's a dress rehearsal almost a final dress rehearsal you should plan to revise your draft several times throughout the writing process all right now writing a draft Basics of a good draft are that it has a fully developed introduction and conclusion. It has fully developed body paragraphs, each containing a topic sentence, at least two examples and detailed support. It follows standard structure and uses complete sentences. Now revising is finding and correcting problems with content Changing the ideas in your writing to make them clear, clearer, stronger, and more convincing. Revising looks at the big picture, the idea level. Now, what are these revising strategies? Look for unity. Does everything refer back to main point? Does each topic sentence refer to the thesis? Does each sentence in each body part Refer back to the topic sentence. Well, look at the details and supporting ideas. Does each body part contain at least two examples? Is each example followed by at least one supporting detail? Look at the coherence. Are all points connect to form a whole? Are transitions used to move from one idea to the next? All right, now some revision techniques. Take a break from your draft before attempting to revise. Read your draft out loud and listen to your words. Imagine yourself as your reader. Look for consistent problem areas. Get feedback from peers. Get help from a tutor if you can afford.
and then the editing stage editing is finding and correcting problems with grammar style formatting word choice usage of language and punctuation and many other things editing focus on the little picture world level however editing tips would involve um, that you work with a clean printed copy double space to allow room to mark suggestions or correction read your write up backwards be cautious of spell check and grammar check backwards mean it's not like a black magic <laughs> that you read words backwards you read it section wise first read the last section and see what you should be what you provide before then this so you're reading backwards read your article loud so you can listen to it and can analyze it at the same time get feedback from your friends colleagues and peers who can be who you know who can really read and give you valuable information or work with a tutor in lecture 24 we started with one important aspect of our business uh, very important one of the very important aspects of our business English course job interviews it couples with the resume writing section and again it's it can stand as a separate section too and we we discuss it in detail and we we watched and we listened to some very interesting examples as well and during the discussion we got to know how should we prepare for the interviews uh, what can uh, these experiences bring to us what are the questions to be expected types of different types of interviews so we know that interview is a meeting um, that has an objective and then the employer's objective is to find out the best person for the job so employer they review a candidates experience and abilities thinking can he does the job um, can you do the job will you do the job are you willing to or how fit you are for this position and you um, you know impressing your employer and uh, and you know, access the position and offer you're thinking what does this position offer me and does it fit my career goals and career development plans so you both have questions in your head when you are going through the process well we know that preparation is the key to success so review your own skills know yourself who you are what you are know your experience and your qualifications check your CV once again to know what are what is there do you need any kind of update anticipate questions based on your CV and the and the and the cover letter that you have sent plus the audience the uh, employers requirement look at the look at the research organization uh, or the uh, or, or the organization you have applied to look at the job look at the occupational area the profession go deep into the profession and find out what are the current trends prepare your questions and practice well in interview you are not only observed for your qualification and your experience but that is there on the CV you are observed for what you are what you can do what is your potential <coughs> <coughs> and never forget that first impression is very powerful I will not say first impression is the last impression I I find this statement quite um, quite hard to make um, I think impressions can be changed but first impression is very powerful and it takes a lot of effort a lot of effort to change an impression so um, it's hello effort or devil effect allow time to relax you need to be relaxed okay you need to be dressed appropriately you 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 need to know that whatever you are doing during an interview it is being observed you are you are being scrutinized the way you move the way you talk the way you walk the way you greet the way you talk the way you bring your logical arguments forward the way you analyze the way you look at situations the way you provide solutions to them the way you are dealing with the with the one who is interviewing you what is your interpersonal communication uh, uh, you know side how is it how effective is it whatever you do because this is why you you are here they already know that you are qualified you are you have experience so that is why you are shortlisted for an interview but interview they are going to see the package as a whole so you watch your uh, each and everything that you do now these are some of the typical questions that we talk during our interview session 
And um, we talked about the probing questions and what if questions, situational questions. And that deals, that questions that deal with your experience. How are you likely to respond in a situation? And, and this, this talks about your analytical skills. Well, and then the probing questions. Uh, when, then when the employer wants to go deep inside some details, how exactly did you feel at that time? Or how did you know that it would work? Or how did you do it? Or what were the outcomes? When they are dealing with hows and whats, they want you to explain more. Now, either they are interested in the, in the topic or in the, in the thing, or they would want to know how good you are at explaining and, and, and how good you are at developing logic. All right. Now, interviews are of different types. Some are competency-based. In competency-based interviews, you are asked about your skills and your, um, how do you identify them. So, um, you know, you need to emphasize on your past behaviors and, and, and your success. Talk about your teamwork, your communication skills, your interpersonal skills, your taking responsibility attitude, and problem-solving skills. However, be aware, whatever you say, you need to provide an evidence for that, or you should be ready to provide an evidence for that. Resp responding to competency questions, and here you involve STAR. No matter what question, what interview type is this, STAR should be there to help you to shine like a star. Like, uh, STAR is basically describing the situation. Situation st S stands for situation. T, explain the task. T for task. What action did you take? Action. A, action. What was the result or outcome? R, result. And what did you learn out of that? So the star is, an, is a philosophy to apply whenever you are given hypothetical situations or situations to be analyzed. Well, um, employers, what they want from an employee is not only the qualification or the experience. They want all-rounders. They want some basic inf professional skills. So they would want good all-round intelligence, enthusiasm, commitment, and motivation, good communication skills, team workability, ability to solve problems because you come across problems all the time, capacity to work hard, initiative and self-reliance, and balanced personality. If you're not able to show uh, these things, then your employer would, would not like to prefer you on someone else who would have these qualities. Then, uh, the, the, in fact, if you, if you make a list of general competencies, which we can call employment competencies or professional competencies, are adaptability, integrity, innovation, teamwork, initiative, drive for results, know the business, having knowledge, Open exchange of information and makes difficult decision, a decision maker. What creates a bad impression? Well, all these things are always there to create bad impression, which are poor personal appearance, negative attitude, you're evasive or using excuses, lack of interest and enthusiasm, or lack of preparation, or poor knowledge of role, or failure to give concrete examples of skills, overemphasize on money and reward or lack of career plan. And then in lecture 5, we moved on, on to interview strategies and skills, where we again reinforced our knowledge about, uh, you know, knowing yourself and articulating yourself. What skills do you have? What values do you, do you offer? What interests do you keep? What abilities do you, do you use? And what are your long-term plans? And how all these things are going, going to benefit the company you are going to be employed for. Then, um, preparing for the interview involves, you know, the, f the f familiarity with business location, you know, having ready with documents, knowing what questions can be asked, having these questions practiced, visualizing the whole scenario and be ready for any, um, <coughs> excuse me, be ready for any unforeseen situation, and then having good, uh, good appearance and acceptable clothing. <clears throat> knowing the interview process, especially 
knowing uh, how this will move from general to specific you can get into causal con uh, you know casual conversation and then you'll move on to down to business and how can interviewer change his or her policy to um, uh, you know um, evaluate and analyze the patterns of change in your personality then what is the interview process is like what are you expected to do what are the expectations of the interviewer uh, your attitudinal expectations, your um, you know um, public relations expectations, and you meet them. However, in a, in all the situations, the star philosophy is not to be forgotten. I hope now the star would be stick to your head because I've talked about it so many times. Well, then there are types of interviewing. We have behavioral interviewing that deals with the uh, you know open-ended question and. Um, uh, we also have closed ended question but and we have wide questions but they all are they all provide different kinds of information so be open to all of them and um, then we talked about what a successful job interview is it deals directly with the amount of preparation you have done for that although luck plays its role we cannot say that but preparation is very important you need to identify your skill what skill do you have and always believe in this that all these employment skills are you can learn them they are you can be gifted one but they are all there and you can learn them like you need to know how to give attention to details if you want to be a successful professional you have to know where to use and how to use assertiveness creativity should be your on 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 always there with you communication skills you need to have strong communication skills you need to show commitment to task coping decision making dedication dependability flexibility understanding policy positive attitude problem solving attitude record of success team building as well as written communication the business english course was all about your business communication precisely focused on written application of your communication skills then um, we had some sample interview questions and we discussed all of them in in detail never forget that your first impression is very important so you can help your first impression by focusing on these things Dr by dressing appropriately being punctual and being uh, informed of what you are going to deal with and being prepared of course and then we 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 discriminated between these four types of interviews case interviews behavioral based interviews telephonic interviews and video conferencing interviews well Case interviews are used to assess logical thinking and problem solving skills and they are geared around solving problems on the spot. Classic business cases are used to test analytical abilities and logic, logical thought process and when you are doing that you are being observed for your skill. However, behavioral versus situational interviews are there. Um, uh, behavioral deals with your past experience and situational deals with your what if situation. However, in both you can bring in the star philosophy to help you prove your point. Now, be aware of the common interview mistakes that people make. Lack of preparation, inappropriate appearance, failure to ask questions or answer questions, poor attitude, exaggerating or being deceitful lying poor nonverbal communication over or under answering questions do you remember that that um, interview of chris gardner that i showed you in one of the in one of the lecture from the movie the pursuit of happiness i love that example for the reason that it has all these negatives there but still the end product is positive and that's a skill a good interviewer has now um the last few lectures starting from 27 till 29th they were about presentation skills they are they are quite recent so i'm not going into detail to repeat all those but presentation skills is one of the important skills of business scenario unless you know to speak how to speak how to communicate how to present your idea your idea keeps no worth at all nobody will buy it unless you are able to sell it so but interesting thing is that you can learn it if you don't have it. So um, delivering an, uh, uh, an effective presentation involves planning, preparation, practice, and presentation techniques. Um, and you now by now I, I hope you will be you will be you will be uh, hundred percent sure about this organization uh, embedded in the philosophy attached with this discipline of business communication and business English. You need to plan things things uh, normally they do not go good 
if they are done at the spur of the moment. Think about it, rationalize them, logically move into it. Plan about your audience, go into audience analysis and find out what your audience would want to know. Prepare accordingly, establish a positive mindset, value your own message. Unless you agree to your message, your audience will never give it due respect. And then, um, you know, look at all the things that you have to deal with during your presentation and be prepared for it. Then, um, you need to prepare, a, prepare for a memorable close. Your opening, your body, and your closing. Each aspect of, your, of this task is very important because opening, you're developing a repo. Body, you're conveying the main message. And closing, you're leaving audience with a note that they will remember um, and keep in head with them. Practice makes someone perfect. Never ever go being under practice. However, you can go being over practice. Over practice will not harm you. Um, though it can make you overconfident, but um, getting over practice is always better than being under practiced. Um, in practicing, you need to have strong opening, clear key points, logical flow, credible evidence, and check out all the aids that are helping you out with these making these points and we have we have had wonderful uh, listing activities to support um, our knowledge of these things and I hope by now you are aware of how to do and create such uh, such a, uh, you know um, effect well structure of a good uh, presentation is uh, is that it, it it moves in a flow and it follows the flow you inform your 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 listeners what you're going to talk about then you talk and then you close it by telling them what you talked about um, it holds the attention of the audience if you are enthusiastic if you are able to express your ideas if you are telling them a story you're bringing in a narrative if you had an upbeat voice and if you have proper body animation and if you have all these things but the message is not of the worth listening then again you'll be in trouble so keep the hows and what's separately prepare separately and combine both of them and then rehearse and practice this was the structure of good presentation that start from an agenda talks about benefits move to key points make you remember and memorize that and then talk about recommendations always go for a feedback because feedback enables you to go through what did not work fine what did not go well and you're able to incorporate that because uh, in your in your upcoming um, projects we all are human beings and we we make mistakes we make um, we leave gaps but these gaps are to be identified so we can overcome them so uh, you make mistake I make mistake but we need to learn from our mistakes because that's the natural way of learning all right and this was all about today's talk regarding um, uh, regarding the revision we st that we started from lecture um, 18 onwards. Well, dear students, uh, the end of this talk brings me to the end of this course discussion as well. And this is the time to depart. But what we covered in this course, we covered business English course that, that helped us understand um, and learn the the communicative competence that we need to learn to to get into enter into and sustain and get successful in the business scenario and this course primarily included information um, that deals with the verbal situation um, you know uh, used verbal situation in of business scenario written situation of business scenario so verbal and written aspect was 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 taken care of all these aspects are taken care of then we talked about different types of documents what is the what is the content area of these documents how what are the formats of these documents and how can you write them and then we talked about the language proficiency the language expansion exercise the listening exercises the exercises we did we we we, we did during workshops it was all to enable you to learn language specifications staying in the business scenario and then the words and house of business uh, in in relevance to all these uh, aspects so basically this was the agenda of business English course and um, 
I'm hopeful if you would go all these uh, all these uh, lessons uh, rigorously, you would apply the knowledge, you will try to practice this. There is no doubt that you can be an excellent uh, business personnel uh, working in wonderful uh, organizations tomorrow and playing role in the in the in the in the success of your community, your cities, and definitely our country. I wish you best of luck, best of luck for future, and I wish all of you um, dream dream you know dream high and then reach the sky all right um, thank you so very much for being so wonderful audience uh, and I'm positive you will definitely do wonderful in your final exams and assessments keep in your prayers we will meet again once we will meet once again inshallah uh, somewhere else in with some other course um, and I wish you good luck this was all for today's talk and this was all for the course of business English that we covered so far and we are we finish it today with this lecture that was lecture 32 of business English Allah Hafiz